eighty percent of it is the interplay between Tony and Roger, yeah, of the whole show, and they have a particular kind of humor. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I do. And of course, it's completely empty when we were shooting there, you know, yeah. and intercutting it with stock shots, you know, of the race and stuff like that. Yeah. I do remember that. I do remember actually once Tony done his uh, two circuit, you know, I jumped into the car and I went myself to drive it, you know, because it's the only time. And I can't remember whether it was a Formula One or two, I don't know what kind of racing car it was. But it was a fantastic experience being so low ground and yeah. low on the ground and driving and it was so sensitive turning the wheel and stuff like that. Yeah. And that I remember completely. Oh God, I just remembered something because I needed Roger to walk from one point to another outside the stage yeah. to shoot a shot of him walking, running. Yeah. And Roger turned to me and said, he said, have you ever seen me running ever? I said, no. <laughs> but he said, I don't think, I think you should do another shot than me running because I look terrible running, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I just remember that when you were talking, but that's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. But I mean, yes, it was uh, most of it shot at Pinewood. Yeah. On and stage five, I think we were. And then some of it, you know, at the racetrack and exteriors and locations and stuff. Uh, and um, I knew those studios very well. And uh, the minute that wonderful smell of the stage hits you when you open the big doors and you go in, yeah, it's memorable and you will never forget it in your life. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, very sentimental and very romantic, and all that. You know, I mean, when I go to Shepperton, I remember movies like Guns of Navarone, yeah. uh, and and. Uh, and I still remember when I bumped into Alec Guinness in a certain corner of the studio yeah. at Shepperton. And you never forget those things, you know. It's, it's, it's a wonderful kind of journey of, 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 of your life. And I know because I remember people came to me and said, you are crazy. Why are you, after your big movie of the ruling class, why are you doing television yeah, yeah and i said i remember that i distinctly remember and i said because i want to work with my friends yeah yeah you know and it was great fun yeah. doing it you know they were both very flashy their dresses tony and roger mm, yeah. and they were always competing with each other mm of who looks better and who looks more different and, uh, yeah. and all that. Mm. And uh, they copied each other. And Tony had this swaying motion, you know, when he was doing dialogue, you know, and doing this. And Roger was doing exactly the same as well. Yeah. And I was wondering who is copying who, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, was the competition always friendly or, or do they get on well as, uh, as two oh, actors? No, it was all very courteous and friendly, yeah. you know. Yeah. And Tony, Tony was always talking to me between takes in Hungarian. Yeah. Because he was Hungarian yeah. origin. And uh, Roger used to get really kind of upset about it. And he said, well, what, what does he want from you? Every time you say you cut, you yeah. know, it just grabs you and it starts talking in Hungarian. And that just shows, you know, that, that 
there was this yeah. competition between them. Yeah, he probably felt a bit paranoid, like maybe he yeah. could out here more or something like that. And it was a great thing because, I mean, for Lou, great to be able to get Tony Curtis to be in the show. Yeah. Because, I mean, he was a big, big name. He was, yeah. I mean, so was Roger, you know, but in an English way. Yeah. Um, it just reminded me very much, as I said before, of Paul Chris Plummer, who was a great friend who's passed away. Yeah. His wonderful film of Knives Is Out or something. Yeah, it, it was a really great and film, it, that wasn't it? Yeah, and um, it is, it, this is that type of a television thing from 50 years ago. Hmm. And Knives Is Out was today. Yeah. doing it an old-fashioned style of a murder mystery thing. Yeah. And it was highly amusing, wonderful and enjoyable mm -hmm. and a wonderful film, I thought. Oh, yeah, it is one of my my favourite films of, of recent years, yeah. certainly. When I was an assistant director, second assistant director on VIPs, which was a film in England, with Richard Burton and uh, uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Margaret Rutherford and uh, uh, Rod Taylor and Orson Welles at, mm. at MGM Studios at Boreham Wood. Yeah. I had a phone call from a pre pre previous producer friend who I worked with as an assistant director saying, kid, how would you like to go to Hollywood and start to direct? From that, I was offered a seven-year contract from Universal. Yeah. Come to Hollywood, observe productions, and eventually come back to England, which I did do three years later. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. so I become British at the British consulate, you know. So I wasn't British when I arrived to Universal Studios. Yeah. And I said, we need to get your green card and your work permit. So we want you to go and stay with Mr. Hitchcock on his film, Marnie, yeah. and observe him directing. So that's how I met Mr. Hitch. Mm -hmm. And I was there observing him and being with him and watching his genius way of working and directing on that film. Yeah. And iron ironically, Sean Connery, was the male star of that film. And yeah. I knew Sean from London. Hmm. And Sean walked on the stage one morning and he said, hey, kid, what are you doing here? And I said, Sean, I'm going to be a director. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the, I saw him then. Yeah. And I, in fact, I went to see the first Bond movie, which he was in. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. shown a 20th century Fox together because he said, there's a screening tomorrow of my bond yeah. and it's just coming out. I want you to come and see it with me. So I went. Oh, wow. But yeah. It was great working with Hitchcock and he was, because yeah. mm. he used to be an art director, designer. So he has, before he made a movie, he drew out every frame of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's how he was making his films. Yeah. And he was a genius. So how would you describe it? was incredible working with him and of course influenced me very much. Yeah. If you see the changeling, because I really did the changeling in a way as an homage to his kind of movies, whether it was um, uh, the one movie with Cary Grant or whichever movies, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I always say when the few times I'm speaking at at uh, Sundance Institute or at UCLA or here and there at universities, he said, if you want to do it, you will do it, you know. Mm. And if you want to become whatever, you will achieve that somehow. Yeah, yeah. But you cannot give up. You mustn't give up. Mm. And... Um, it wasn't easy then at all. And it was never, ever easy to get into the film business, ever. No. And just as difficult now as it was then. 
you know and it's an impossible puzzle you know but a puzzle can be solved yeah oh yeah Thank mm-hmm. you.